This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Earlier this year, I had trouble getting my featherweight sportsman, Strange Young Man, to drive properly. Today, I think we're gonna fix that. The problem we had was a power transfer from the gearbox into the ground. And I think there were two real issues with it. On day one, I was using old bike tire, which was just being worn away and leaving big black marks all over the floor. And also I was using hubs that had a smooth bore and grub screws to transfer the power between the D shaft on the motor and the actual wheels, which was causing the grub screws to round out and not hold anymore. I fixed that problem at the event by putting Loctite down the shaft of the gearbox and putting everything on, and the Loctite held so well that I actually had to burn it back out again using two lighters to get the whole thing off. To fix this problem, we want something that actually grabs the flat of the D shaft a whole lot better than a grub screw. And that's where PCBWay comes in. They have provided some 3D printed steel hubs for me to use to hold onto the D shaft and connect the wheels. These have the D shaft actually printed into them, and they also have threads to hold an M5 grub screw and then also threads to hold M4s to hold the wheels on. And these threads work directly from the factory, they just screw straight in. Obviously we're gonna need some Loctite to hold all this together because there is no locking mechanism on here, which would be fairly hard to do to put nylock into something like this, which is a 3D printed part. And again, 3D printed in steel, which is insane that we can actually do that these days. And there you go, that's an M5 bolt going in there, you can see that working quite nicely directly from PCBWay. So now we need wheels and we're gonna use polyurethane cast wheels again, which means a TPU wheel itself and some molds which we're gonna coat in a brush on mold release so that we can actually remove them once we're done. And then we are going to mix up a big batch of polyurethane. This is a 60A Shaw polyurethane, which is quite hard, but for a 13 kilo robot, that is definitely necessary. And then it gets poured into all of the molds and left to cure. A couple of days later, it is time to release our polyurethane wheels from the molds. And first, they get a bath. This is to wash away the water-soluble mold release that I use. And they sit in there for up to an hour just to let the water dissolve as much mold release as possible. And then it is time to actually crack the molds open. This is a difficult process. I mess these molds up a little bit. They normally have a lead-in chamfer where I put a screwdriver to separate the sides from the base of the mold. Also, I usually print them using my stronger print settings, and in this case, they were going to take a very long time to print, so I printed them in the weaker print settings, which led to breaking most of the bottom sections of these molds, which isn't good. It means that to do another round of wheels, I'm gonna to have to print a whole new set of molds, which is not ideal. I would prefer to be able to use one set of molds to do as many wheels as I need, but sometimes you don't get that. And of course, when I get the bottom off, that is only half the battle. Then I need to get the sides off as well. And the polyurethane really does like to grip two things. Even with the mold release, it takes quite a lot of effort trying to wrangle the sides of the mold off. Eventually, I find a good solution by jamming one of the screwdrivers down. This is a kind of tricky thing to try and do because if the screwdriver is too sharp or too thick, it can damage the sides of the mold, which again, I was trying to have some sections of the mold reusable. I think I'm just gonna have to reprint the entire lot after this, but with the right screwdriver, it is possible to manually release the sides of the mold from the tires themselves, which makes separating them off by hand a whole lot easier. And in actual fact, possible just in general.
And there you go. We have four wheels ready to rock and roll. These are fit for purpose at this point in time. I will obviously need to go through and make some spares at some point, but I've got over a month before the competition, so I've got a little bit of time to do those. So I'll do that process off camera. I'll also probably use a different TPU as the center for that, but uh, we'll talk about that TPU in a different video, talking about and building an entirely different robot. Now that we have wheels, it is time to attach everything together. And at this point, I need to talk about how I messed up the design of these wheel hubs. So here we are in my design file and I have added a mock-up of the drive shaft with a massive tolerance gap so that you can see what is going on here. This is absolutely not the tolerance that is actually designed into this system, but it's just for visual demonstration purposes. Now, my original intention here was to have the grub screw sit in this top face opposing the flat that's in the shaft and in the bore of our hub, such that when the screw went down from this plate down, it would push onto the back of the shaft and down onto the flat, and it would force an interference between these two. So I can just kind of like, you know, fake that by doing this. And you can see that if we just imagine that the screw would come down from the top, it's pushed into the back here and it's forced these two flats to interact with each other, which means that we're going to get full torque transfer between those two flat sections. But that's not what I did. In the design file, you can see I put the grub screw hole on the wrong side. This grub screw hole is interacting directly with the flat, which is the problem we were facing before. The grub screw on the flat was rounding out. But I might have one saving grace here, and that is the fact that the tolerance inside this bore is very, very good. So if I put this on my spare gearbox, I need to actually line it up perfectly to get it in because the tolerance is that good. And then it snaps in place, and there is basically no wiggle in this. There is no slop between the gearbox and the shaft, which means that this flat is marrying up perfectly. So I don't really need the bolt from this side to square the face into the flat. It just is happening based on the tolerance of the print that was done in this metal, which is really, really good to see. But we still have to deal with the fact that right now, if I was to put a grub screw into here, it would be the thing holding onto the flat of the shaft, and we would potentially run into that issue of rounding out the grub screw that we saw last time. I have an idea for this though. If I just put a little divot right down at the bottom of where this grub screw would go, then the grub screw is gonna kind of sit into that little divot, and it's not going to apply pressure kind of in the twist direction, but it will stop this hub from coming back off again, which, is exactly what we need. Now, the big problem here is I can't just put this on and drill through this hole because of course there is a nice thread in here and if I put a drill through, even if it's a smaller drill, I risk messing up this threaded hole. So I have come up with another plan. So to get this little divot on the shaft in the right spot, I have printed a jig. This is what this is here and I can slide the gearbox in, it's got a D-shaft hole on one side, doesn't actually hold the gearbox, but it does hold the shaft. So all I need to do is clamp these two things together just to make sure everything sits exactly where it needs to. Now you can see this hole at the top here is wider than it needs to be, and that is for two bearings, which are a push fit in, and then I've got a little spacer that goes in as well, and then a second bearing that goes on top, just like that. Now, with that entire stack up in there, we're then gonna drill down straight through these two bearings, which will hopefully hold the drill bit perfectly straight and stop it from wandering left and right on the actual shaft of the motor. Because this motor shaft is steel of some kind, it may be a slightly hardened steel. The drill bits I have should at least be able to put a little divot in it, which is all I need to hold onto the grub screw. But if it is a hardened steel, the drill bit may try to walk all over the place, and these two bearings should stop that from happening. Well, that's the hope. Let's find out if this works. <laughs> All 
All right, fairly simple process. The drill went a little bit deeper than I was expecting it to, I think because I adjusted the table just a little bit before I did it, but it doesn't matter. If we click these two things together, you can kind of sort of see down that hole that everything lines up pretty perfectly. And then if we get the grub screw and put the grub screw in, like so, then everything sits together and works very well. It doesn't appear to have pushed the faces apart, which is what I was worried about. And also I cannot remove this from the shaft, which is what this grub screw was really only here for in the first place. Sure, if it was on the other side, it was supposed to be helping the mating surfaces, but it's also being used to stop the wheel from just sliding off the end here. And that is doing exactly what it needs to do in this case. I now have four more of these that I need to do. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do all of that off camera because realistically, I've just got to drill four more shafts. I've got to set four more things and then we're just gonna literally slam a wheel on and put some bolts on and attach everything to the chassis. So I think we can now skip ahead to the test. As with the last time I did this, I am standing back up elevated on a concrete step to just kind of keep myself out of the way if the robot runs away from me. And we're just gonna give this a bit of a shot. Oh, that's instantly more responsive, even at like really low stick speeds. That's great. Although I do think the motors down the right side are having an issue because when I'm trying to drive straight, I'm getting a curve out of them. It seems that front left one, front right one, is not really moving very well. But I'm like barely touching the stick and I'm getting not that much slip. I'm getting more slip than I expected, but the robot will be heavier than this in final configuration. Obviously we've just got basically wires on this right now but that isn't actually doing too bad. I do need to work out the problem with that motor at the front there. I did have one that I thought I needed to replace, but I don't think it's the right front motor. Uh, let's see if we can get back on the, yeah, there we go, nice. Oh man, the low speed movement out of this is really quite nice. Whoa, okay, yeah, we do get some wheel slip if we try and go too fast with it. But yeah, that right front is slightly concerning. Nothing to do with the hubs, of course. It's probably just a motor issue. But that's cool. I like that a lot. I think this is working pretty well. Okay, I think this is gonna be the end of the video. We have the wheel system working pretty well or the drive system working pretty well. I need to sit down and sort out whatever's going on in that front right motor. I think it might be the motor, but we'll double check. I'll double check the gearbox and the motor and everything just before we uh, kick this off and do the final rebuild. Hopefully I've got a new system in mind for the lifting arms. I really, really, really wanna get this system back to being a lifter. So that's what we're going to aim for in the next video. Uh, but if you've enjoyed this one, please subscribe and stick around because as mentioned, we'll be rebuilding the entire robot again very, very soon. Uh, and I will see you in the next video.